even more precious. He was a uh, treasury agent, armed agent, criminal investigator, assigned to the IRS. And I'll get him to recap his story, but to make a long story short, because it's important, because it's about other people's awakenings that have since happened, or people that find out the truth and decide to just go along with the system. And so that's really the story of life. Are you going to stand up for what's right, or are you going to just go along with the system? Are you going to just follow orders? But he heard a talk radio host with a guest on exposing the IRS as a collection agency for the Federal Reserve, that the Federal Reserve was private, New World Order. Well, he thought, you know what, I'm going to disprove this because he liked the radio show. He listened to it routinely, and he was going to contact the show and show them the air other ways. Well, he found out that the guests and the hosts were not lying, and then that led him into all of the different adventures, some of which could have put him underneath the jail. Uh, Joe Bannister joins us, and you'll also see under him his website, uh, where you can get some of the key reports that he's written to give to your friends and family so they can understand exactly what this multi-armed, tentacled creature is. Um, and, of course, we're talking about the IRS. So, Joe, it is great to have you here with us. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, start at the beginning and then run right through the, the trial, how they tried to imprison you. And then I, I, I want to get into some of the things that are currently happening uh, in the world and get your take on that. Very well. Well, uh, thank you again for having me. Um, basically, I, I graduated from college in 1986 from San Jose State University and uh, got an accounting degree and moved into the accounting profession. And after a few years in the accounting profession, uh, I looked at what I was doing and what my boss was doing, and I thought, there's no way that I can do this kind of accounting work for another you know, 30 years. I need something a little more exciting. Yet I didn't want to abandon my skills, uh, financial and tax and accounting skills. So I looked around at my friends and, and even many family members, and a number of them were in law enforcement, mostly local and state law enforcement. But I had at least one friend who was in federal law enforcement. He actually worked for the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. And he had friends who worked in the FBI. And so through talking with them, I, of course, I got very excited uh, that they said, oh, the FBI loves to get their hands on CPAs and attorneys to become special agents. Uh, and I think they'd really like your qualifications. And so my Bob, who ended up becoming my boss years later at the IRS, put me in touch with these various FBI agents. And so I did pursue an application with the Federal Bureau of Investigation back in the early 90s. And I also, as a backup uh, plan, submitted an application to the IRS Criminal Investigation Division. Now, at that time, of course, my heart was set on the FBI because at least prior to Waco and those kinds of things, the FBI had a reputation. They had TV shows about them, and you know, everybody thought it was really cool to be an FBI agent, but there weren't that many great TV shows or um, uh, public support for the IRS, so I wasn't that thrilled with the IRS option. So I pursued the FBI full blast and actually qualified to be sent to Quantico, Virginia. But there in the early 90s, there was a hiring freeze at the FBI, which ended up meaning that they couldn't actually hire me and send me to Quantico, Virginia. Well, in the meantime, while I was waiting, the IRS Criminal Investigation Division called me and asked me if I'd be interested in a position at the San Francisco office. I grew up in San Jose, California, about 50 miles to the south of San Francisco. And given that the FBI couldn't hire me and I did want to get into law enforcement, my, my friend, Bob Garini, said, hey, you know, go ahead and, and interview and see what happens. Well, the IRS did, in fact, extend me an offer. And it was November of 1993 when I was sworn in as an IRS special agent. And just for the listeners' information, uh, you know, there are all kinds of, as they're affectionately called, alphabet soup agencies. Uh, well, the IRS uh, is no exception. They have a criminal investigation division component and it is staffed by about 3,000 special agents or criminal investigators. And those special agents are, the, are looked at the same in the federal government as an FBI agent or a Secret Service agent. The designation is GS-1811. So I became a GS-1811 in November of 1993. And that's basically under Treasury, isn't it? 
it was at that time. Of course, now everything's changing around and everything's becoming under the Department of Homeland Security, but uh, IRS uh, was and still is under the Treasury umbrella. So uh, I was hired in November of 1993, and I expected, of course, my brothers by that time were in uh, local and state law enforcement. Uh, at this point, you know, my brothers are a battalion chief in a fire department, a lieutenant in the state, in the state patrol, and a police officer in, in San Jose. So they all got the jobs and intended to spend a full 30-year career there. Uh, I only had to spend 20 years to fulfill a full career span in the IRS, and I intended to do so. I got in when I was about 30, and uh, that was my expectation. But about two years into, I'm sorry, about three years into my career at the IRS, uh, I was, as you said, very, really described it perfectly. I was listening to a talk radio show. Uh, the host was a gentleman named Jeff Metcalf, and his guest was D.V. Kidd. Uh, she's still around and beating the drum for us all. And D.V. Kidd was talking about the income tax, the Federal Reserve, uh, the New World Order. She didn't really get into a lot on the radio, but uh, she got into enough about the income tax that it really got me because I thought either I'm a terrible investigator because this host and this guest now have fooled me or there's something to this message. But I really couldn't accept either one of those because – the first one would hurt my ego that I wasn't a good investigator and people could fool me very easily. And the second one was that the, uh, the career that I had put my uh, life into and really the income tax system I had wrapped my entire professional life around uh, was somehow there was something wrong with it. I mean, legally wrong and morally wrong. And so I, I decided to look into these claims that DV Kid made on the radio that day. And that was in uh, December of 1996, about three years into my career. And so I got some booklets that DV Kid offered. She was only offering them for a buck a piece, so she wasn't making any money off of them, but they're about 40 or 50 pages a piece. Uh, one was called Blind Loyalty, and the other was called uh, Why a Bankrupt America. And she spoke about or wrote about the Federal Reserve and the income tax and uh, New World Order and all these kinds of things. And what I found interesting about her books is that they were very well, not only very well researched, but they were very well backed up. She would actually list the names and addresses and in some cases telephone numbers of some of the people that were making these claims about the income tax. And so one day I just thought, you know what, I, I need to find these things out and I'm going to call these people directly. And, uh, you know, this wasn't some kind of a, it wasn't a, a sanctioned IRS investigation. It was a, a human being, an American, someone who thought that he was doing the right thing, using his financial skills to uh, protect his country. And then hearing someone say, no, that's not what you're doing for those people. So I really felt uh, you know, an ethical and moral need to find out what was going on, not to mention a duty. So uh, I did start to call some of these people that were listed in DV Kids booklets. And to you know, just shorten the story a great deal, I spent about two years while I went to work every day as an IRS special agent. Uh, on evenings and weekends, I would continue to dig and dig and dig and document and research and investigate to determine if these claims that DV Kid made about the reach and authority of the IRS and the federal income tax laws, if they were true. And my expectation was that if she, if it was not true, that I would, of course, expose her and the host, Jeff Metcalf, as liars. Uh, and I really didn't uh, contemplate the other alternative, <laughs> that they were actually telling the truth and what I would do about that. But after that two-year period of e evenings and weekends, um, I came to the conclusion that, at least a preliminary inclusion, conclusion, that indeed uh, they pointed to a lot of facts and evidence that I couldn't poke holes into. And uh, it was so factual and so um, strong that I, I felt a compelling need to, uh, you know, I had a duty to speak up about what I had found. Uh, and I knew, of course, I wasn't so blind to think that uh, this couldn't have caused harm to my career and my, my family and things. But again, that sense of duty, the fact that I took an oath uh, on the first day of my, of my job to support and defend the Constitution, and I was always mindful of that oath as I uh, did my duties as an IRS special agent, 
that I felt I really had no choice but to at least speak up and question my supervisors and my peers at the IRS about what I had found. And I was humble enough to uh, basically let them know that, hey, if I've made a mistake somewhere, please just tell me and, you know, you can uh, give me 20 lashes and uh, I'll just have to tuck my tw tail between my legs and, you know, wish I had never done it. So you but, came in humbly and said, hey, these folks are saying this. Can you answer these questions? Tell people what happened next. Well, I decided that it might be best to put together some of the highlights of my investigation into some kind of a report, because as you know, any criminal investigator has to put together a report that's reviewed by their superiors and the, you know, the prosecutor to determine if someone should be prosecuted. So I'm I was used to preparing reports, so I prepared a report of some of the highlights of the information that I had encountered. And I pr produced that report and, and gave it to my immediate supervisor. If you remember me talking about Bob Guarini, that friend from many years earlier, he ended up becoming my boss at the IRS in the San Jose, California uh, CID office. So I had to give my report to Bob, the very guy who wanted me to get a job as an IRS special agent. And I asked him to forward that report uh, and, and transmit a letter up the chain of command uh, up to and including the commissioner. Uh, because again, I, I felt a duty. In fact, the commissioner at the time, Commissioner Rosati, he issued a memorandum to all employees in the IRS telling them that if they ever encountered fraud, waste, or abuse, that they should report it immediately. So I was really just doing my duty and following IRS policy. Of course, I knew the message wouldn't go over too well, but still, they had the same duty. They took the same oath that I did, and I expected that even grudgingly so, that they would uh, do something about it. But what they decided to do was to issue me a short memorandum that stated that they would not be responding to any of my questions and that they would provide me with the paperwork necessary to tender my resignation. And they immediately took my firearm and told me that I was to be placed on administrative leave. And uh, they, sent, they sent me home. They took my office key away. And I was supposed to go home for a week and think about what my next move would be. So they didn't fire me, but they certainly encouraged me to resign and flat out told me in writing that they were not going to address any of my concerns. Now, Joe, how did they just show you the door? Well, they put together a, a brief memorandum, and I, I understood from my chief, um, they call them special agents in charge now, but he actually told me that my report and my request for review went all the way up to the assistant commissioner for criminal investigation back in Washington, D.C. The only person higher than that gentleman is the commissioner himself. So that's how high up my request went. And yet when the uh, answer came back down the chain of command, I was told in a memorandum, which is available you know, on my website, people can look at it, uh, where my chief told me, we're not going to be responding to your concerns and we will provide you with the paperwork necessary to tender your resignation. And we're immediately placing you on administrative leave for one week and you're to stay on call, but you're not, you know, you're, you're not to come into this office and you're supposed to stay at home and be on call. So in America, asking questions about the law was something that they basically told you you weren't welcome there. Absolutely. I mean, I, I believe that I was adhering to my oath to support and defend the Constitution. As I mentioned earlier, I actually received a memorandum in my inbox, just like every other IRS agent, that I was supposed to report any indications of fraud, waste, or abuse. And so I did exactly what the IRS instructed me to do, 